And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena, and happy last Friday of the year. You're right. December 29, the last Friday of the year. I know. <laughs> We've been talking about how it doesn't really feel like the end of the year, uh, just before Christmas, and now it seems to be kind of rushing through. <laughs> it seems to be going by quite uh, quickly. That's right. That's right. All right. Uh, another day. <laughs> another <laughs> keyword news to cover. All right. Let's jump into keyword news. We're going to try to clarify some of the major headlines for our listeners, starting with our first pick of the day. Another reshuffle. So there's been another shakeup in uh, President Yoon's cabinet with the president replacing all three of his uh, top aides. We know exactly what it's aimed at. Maybe a fresh momentum leading up to the April general elections. What's changed? What's the latest, Adam? Right. So the first vice minister of foreign affairs, Chang Jin, has been named the new national security advisor. He's a career diplomat who was also the ambassador to Russia just before his latest position. Now, the Appointment comes as the current National Security Advisor Chu tae yong is going through the parliamentary hearing process to take the vacant position of National Intelligence Service Chief. Uh, Chang said he's looking to continue pushing on from the diplomatic and security strategy of the administration, including strengthening cooperation with the US and uh, the new Indo-Pacific strategy. The current ambassador to Germany, Kim hong gyun will replace Chang as the uh, first Vice Minister. Kim is a known expert on North Korean issues and also had a stint as Seoul's top nuclear envoy. Now, the Chief of Staff, Kim Dae-gi, actually announced his resignation. Yoon has named his current Director of National Policy, Lee Kuan Sub, to take the role uh, effective January 1st, so on Monday. Uh, the new appointment came less than a month, actually, after a, uh, a reshuffle that created the new Director of National Policy role. Uh, he was actually the first one to fill that post, but he's now in a different one, uh, the new one uh, that I just mentioned. Uh, he's a career public servant with known expertise in nuclear energy policy. Now, replacing E as the Director of National Policy is somewhat of a political outsider, uh, Song tae Yun, who is uh, an economics professor at uh, Yonsei University. So there you have it. All mm. three of his top aides are replaced by those three people mentioned. All right, let's cover some North Korea issues with our second key word of the day. Retaliate first, report later. There are plenty of provocations out of North Korea this year in line with their weapons development program and, of course, changing geopolitical dynamics. Now, President Yoon recently called on South Korea's frontline soldiers to immediately retaliate to an enemy attack and report it later, continuing his tough stance against North Korea. Yeah, so basically it's a shoot first, ask questions later kind of approach. Now, he made the remarks as he paid a year-end visit to a frontline uh, army unit. He said such a measure was necessary to end the enemy's desire for provocations. Now, Yoon added that the South Korean people expect a strong and dependable army. Uh, he noted that North Korea is the only country in the world that explicitly specifies invasion and preemptive nuclear use in its constitution. He added that the North can undertake provocations at any time, depending on their political objectives. Uh, Yoon also met the troops and thanked them for their dedication to service, and he reiterated the government's support for the soldiers, assuring them that he will address their welfare concerns, including salary increases. Meanwhile, over in North Korea, Kim Jong-un has called for stepped-up efforts to prepare for war. Run us through what he said. Yeah, so this is a kind of a, a war of words, but not directly aimed at each other. Uh, but mm. the state media quoted him as saying that the U.S. is engaged in unprecedented acts of confrontation against the country. He was speaking during the second day session of the plenary meeting of the ruling Workers' Party. Uh, Kim also presented a goal of strengthening strategic cooperation with what he called anti-imperialist countries. Now, the meeting is to review uh, state policies for this year and set those for uh, the next, uh, Kim is, is expected to use the ongoing meeting as a venue to deliver his key speech to replace his annual New Year's uh, Day address. This has been a kind of a, a common occurrence each year for the past uh, few years. Uh, experts expect Kim to lay out a set of measures to bolster its military capabilities, including a plan to launch more military spy satellites. So they're um, using the momentum that they had 
on their self-proclaimed successful third uh, military spy satellite launch uh, not so long ago, and we could expect more coming into 2024. Mm. Let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Gulf Elf FTA. So Korea has clinched an FTA with a group of six oil-rich Middle Eastern countries uh, that are that form the Gulf uh, Cooperation Council in further economic cooperation between the two sides. Uh, what's the latest? Right, so the GCC uh, includes Saudi Arabia and the UAE, two countries uh, where South Korea has been boosting a lot of economic ties recently. President Yoon has made trips there uh, with economy uh, deals uh, and business deals being the focus. Now, the FDA itself is to make the country a more competitive exporter, particularly of automobiles and defense and arms products. It has also advanced Korea ahead of Japan and China in bolstering economic ties with the bloc. Uh, South Korea will remove tariffs on almost 90% of all items, including liquefied uh, natural gas and other petroleum products. The Gulf states uh, will scrap tariffs on just over 76% of traded products and 4% of traded goods. Now, the tariff remove Uh, removals are expected to spur further trades and investments between the two sides. They will gradually eliminate the 5% tariff on major Korean export items over 20 years, including internal combustion engine vehicles, auto parts, machinery and arms as well. Now, the GCC will phase out tariffs on numerous Korean potential export items, including beef, ginseng and seasoned seaweed. Uh, Cosmetics, medicines and medical devices are also slated for tariff relief. With the increasing importance of energy security and Korea's heavy reliance on energy imports like oil and natural gas from the GCC, the FDA is expected to strengthen the foundation for the stable procurement of energy resources. Uh, The government anticipates that the tariff elimination and reduction on major energy and resource items will enhance the competitiveness of Korean companies utilizing these products as raw materials. Of course, there's been a lot of price increases because of raised energy prices. And hopefully, uh, the government hopes anyway that this will alleviate such kind of problems to some extent. Now, additionally, the FTA includes individual annexes enhancing cooperation in six areas, namely energy and resources, bioeconomy, advanced industries, smart farms, health industry Mm. and audiovisual services. Audiovisual services like entertainment? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. the official naming that they put on the <laughs> Sometimes we have fancy jargon for such simple ideas. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Special probe. Lawmakers have approved a proposal for a special investigation into allegations of stock manipulation involving the First Lady Kim Gon-hee and the land development scandal in uh, Songnam. Uh, the fact that the bill was railroaded by the DP in, in the in the first, uh, I guess the inevitable is expected. The president will likely veto. What's the latest on him? Yeah, certainly, uh, again, a, a case where the Democratic Party has uh, utilized their majority to kind of railroad bills that what the uh, People Power Party believes is kind of a political ploy ahead of general elections. Now, the DP uh, passed the two special probe bills in a plenary session uh, yesterday. The People Power Party actually boycotted both votes, citing concerns that they were uh, targeting the general election. They basically walked out of the chamber, and so um, those votes were uh, extended. Now, uh, Kim has been accused of being involved in manipulating the stock prices of Deutsche Motors, which is a BMW car dealer here in Korea. Kim has, of course, denied the allegations. Now, after the law goes into effect, the parliamentary speaker must request the president to appoint a top special counsel. The president, in turn, has to request a political party to recommend a special prosecutor candidate uh, within three days. Uh, The other special uh, proposal is for six people uh, accused of receiving at least 5 billion won in bribes in a land development scandal in Tejandong in Hungnam from DP Chairman Lee Jae-myung's time as the city's mayor. Uh, the top office said the president will immediately exercise his veto once the bills are transferred uh, to the government. But the president could also actually face backlash if he overturns the bill, having already exercised his veto power twice before, which could affect public sentiment ahead of the elections. But mm-hmm. the top office said that he will do it again. So. 
Um, we'll have to see what the reactions are uh, as well. But uh, yeah, it's, the DP have been, it's become a, a common occurrence where the DP is railroading these bills, the president is vetoing them. Mm. Um, and so, of course, this kind of sparks some uh, criticism from the public as well. It's basically saying, oh, well, lawmakers and parliament, there's this whole political kind of wrangling mm. and uh, show uh, that they're calling it ahead of the elections is getting a bit tiresome for the public. Because sometimes I think the general public is well aware compromises from both parties for the betterment of a governance uh, is expected. And we're seeing none of that. It's it's just railroad, veto, railroad, veto. We saw it a little bit frequently, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. All right. What are we feeling going into the April general elections? We might see a similar pattern. <laughs> probably more intensified actually <laughs> going up into it when the official campaigning kind of kicks off and that's when things start to really get heated and uh, we'll probably see more uh, locking of horns between the two parties as and well as mudslinging the, the <laughs> and mudslinging and uh, yeah that's the kind of an, one unfortunate aspect uh, that's kind of a, a widely criticized area of Korea politics is that um, both parties, when they do campaign, they don't really kind of appeal and promote their mm -hmm. own party's kind of initiatives and mm -hmm, proposals mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. the betterment of the public welfare. They're, it's mostly about uh, negative campaigning right. against the rival parties. And that is something that the public is starting to get or has been quite tired of mm. uh, over the past few general elections and presidential elections at that, saying mm. we don't want you to, you know, bad mouth the other party. We'd want to hear more of what you have to offer. And mm. uh, it's becoming a rare occurrence, unfortunately. Mm. Why well, do I have a feeling next year's coverage will be so fun for you and I, the American <laughs> presidential <laughs> election. We, we haven't even gotten to prime primaries there and right. the lead up to the general elections right here in South Korea. Stay tuned, folks. Mm. Or let's move It'll on. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad I have you. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on to our final keyword of the day. Taeyong Debt Restructuring. So one of South Korea's largest builders at Taeyong ENC has applied for a debt restructuring program due to a cash crunch. Tell us the details. Yeah, more unfortunate news uh, regarding the uh, economy and businesses and the construction sector. Uh, Taeyang uh, filed for a debt restructuring program after failing to repay its real estate project financing or PF loan. Now, real estate PF is a practice that uses loans to finance real estate development projects. A developer usually agrees to pay their creditor a portion of their project's future uh, profits. Now, experts and industry insiders are concerned that the company's decision may have repercussions on the construction industry as it reflects a broader issue of real estate PF insolvency affecting the sector. Now, Taeyong ENC is currently facing a liquidity crisis exacerbated by a property market downturn. Uh, the company currently uh, holds a PF loan balance of approximately 3.2 trillion won. It initially intended to use this funding to build apartments and office buildings with the plan to sell these properties for profit. However, nearly half of Taeyong ENC's sites have yet to begin construction due to high interest rates and soaring construction costs. The uh, firm was required to repay its maturing PF loans worth 48 billion won to creditors yesterday and about 400 billion won by the end of this month. So it was unable to do so. Now, debt restructuring requires approval from more than 75% of creditors and is aimed at resolving liquidity issues. The process typically involves extending loan maturities and providing additional fund disbursements. Uh, the government is taking measures in the meantime to prevent the PF issue from escalating uh, into a full-blown financial crisis. It is one of the big builders in Korea. Um, so any kind of downfall uh, of that company may, of course, have ripple effects in, in the whole construction uh, industry and subsequently the economy as well and markets, financial markets. So the government is uh, keeping a watchful eye mm. on it. And a lot of high ranking economic officials actually held a meeting recently mm. as well to discuss uh, this issue. So we'll have to see how it plays out and mm. if uh, that debt restructuring program is actually approved and how much it will actually help. All right. Thank you very much, Adam, for today's coverage. Uh, Happy New Year. We'll see you next year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We'll see you in the new year. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. 
See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.